This is Inbred, Episode 7. I'm Barry. I'm Jeff. And we're here to talk about sandwiches and the sandwich adjacent sandwiches. Mostly the adjacent today. First, before Uh we begin, I'd like to apologize for the irregular cadence of our shows. Life has a way of pooping all over your best laid plans. But fret not, we're all in on this. So I'm just going to jump in. Jeff, it's been a minute. What you been eating? Well, most recently, I had a fantastic sandwich at a place here in Vegas called The Coffee Class. The co- oh, dude, I went there recently for breakfast. I have had breakfast there, but I hadn't had any of their sandwiches. So I decided I was going to try their pesto parmesan grilled cheese. Pesto parmesan. It is a parmesan crusted grilled cheese with smoked gouda, pesto, on Texas toast with a house made tomato bisque dipper. Now, I went the extra mile and added some prosciutto to my grilled cheese. And let me just tell you, this was a fantastic grilled cheese sandwich. That Parmesan crusting on the outside really helped seal in all the the flavor there. Wait, wait. Crusting on the... So so they sprinkle the Parmesan all over it Mm -hmm. and then they... they And then grill it. it Grill it and... Grill that Parmesan right on the outside of the bread. It's awesome. Okay. But yeah, that smoked gouda wasn't. Uh, sometimes you'll get a smoked gouda that's a little too smoky and it's yeah. overpowering. Yeah. This one was a perfect balance, and then that just that little hint of the pesto on there, and then the uh, the prosciutto. Oh, it was awesome. And then I'm usually not a big fan of tomato soup with my grilled cheese. I know that's blasphemy for a lot of people. Yeah, it is. But a tomato bisque is different. Yeah. Um. And then this one was actually a, a, a tomato bisque dipper, so it well, was... For the uninitiated, how is it different? Uh, it tends to be thicker, have a little more seasoning to it. Um, I thought it had more like cream or whatever. It's a smooth, um, creamy... Se- you're right, yeah. it is very seasoned. It's French. Yes. Um, and I, if I remember correctly, you don't always have to have cream in your bisque, but I think a lot of chefs do put cream in there mm. to thicken it up. Uh, I would have to look that up, to be honest, but it is off the thick, top of my head. It is a thick cream yes. soup, and they strain it and puree it and yep. whatnot. Now, I like lobster bisque, crab bisque, shit like that. And then this dipper, it was almost like dipping it into like a marinara or something. It had that much flavor, this little dipper uh, that they had with this sandwich. So I quite enjoyed it. I'm very interested now in going back and trying some of their other sandwiches because I've had several of their breakfast items Um they have pop tarts that they make from scratch. I saw that when I was there. Oh my god, their pop tarts are so good. Um, I've had their mixed berry one, which is really good. Their newest one, um, I haven't tried yet. It's um, it's like a cherry uh, amaretto pop yes, tart. Yes, yes, thank you. I couldn't think of the, the other one, but dude, I've been there. They've sold out of that one every time I've tried to go down and get it again. It's like, god damn it, it's gone. So, but uh, yeah, they have a lot of great food there um, that I have tried, and then now a lot more that I have not tried. So I'll tell you what I, will I be had going back when I went there because this is what I ate. Okay, I had the smoked bacon egg salad toast. Now mm, <clears throat> that one looked good. That was one that it's I really wanted. House made egg salad, heirloom yep. tomato. You get me the heirloom. Oh pickled yeah. red onion, avocado, smoked bacon on a multi grain crispy toast. And I love pickled red onions. So. If you're a gluten free person, they got the gluten free bread too. They could they could do that. Which is blasphemy, but you know, if you yeah. gotta have it, you gotta have it. Yeah, um, it was really good. I'm not, I'm not like an avocado toast guy. I, I never got right. that, but I could get into it with all that and the smoked bacon egg. Sa- I love egg salad. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, one I wish I could try is the goat breakfast sandwich. It's a big yes, griddled with get here we go. Oh yeah, bacon no, aioli. I, I know what you're talking about. Bacon aioli. You always yep. get me with aioli. Yep, prosciutto. Br- Whipped goat cheese, which yep. sounds amazing, but would kill my GI. Right, <laughs> baby arugula and scrambled eggs. Who is this guy talking to you about sandwiches when he can't eat cheese? I love cheese, he and I will have it. suffer for you, listener, if I have to. Yep, he just will. Take a lot of lactate. And I want to try that so bad, but just ugh, oh I yeah, I, I so when I was going there to to order my sandwich, I. Because I had my birthday free coffee, so I had to, of course, go get my free coffee. Yeah. But I, I looked at all these sandwiches, and I'm like, that goat sounds really good because I love a good baguette. And then uh, I just I, I kept going back and forth, and then 
I kind of just randomly pointed at something and it was the the grilled cheese because I, I do love a good grilled cheese. But yeah, and I could tell you this place is good just from walking in because you got all the 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 hipster women outside. Yep, yep sure like, do. Okay, yeah, this is a place. This is, they got good breakfast brunch. I love that place. The only downside is they're only open till five p.m. daily. Well, it's a breakfast lunch joint. Yeah, I and food, I get it, that. It doesn't seem very, you know, dinnery. But your schedule is kind of. Shifted. Yeah, my schedule's all over the place lately, so I never know. And you usually don't get up before noon because of what your job. Yeah, is, I so mean, it's I'm rough for you. Yeah, I'm I'm at work late, and then by the time I wind down, it's like, oh, hey, look, it's four a.m. <laughs> That's why I never call you before noon. Yep. Even though there's some cool breakfast shit. I huh? got to schedule that well in advance. Most people know not to call me before noon. <laughs> uh, this is true. What else have you been eating? Well, we just had some tacos. Yeah, and you know what? That leads us into what we're talking about today we is tacos. tacos. Now, okay. According to the cube rule of mm-hmm. food for identifying dishes based on the starch locations at cuberule.com, a okay. sandwich is a two. Two starches. Okay. Whereas a taco is a three because it's on three sides. And okay. therefore, a hot dog is a taco or a taco is a hot dog, whatever. No, a hot dog is a taco. However, the New York State Department of Taxation and Finance Taxpayer Guidance Division, who weighed in on it in 2011, which, mind you, kicked off the whole cube rule thing to begin with, okay. states that sandwiches are generally subject to sales tax and went on to explain what is considered a sandwich for their purposes. Hot dogs are on that list. Also, gyros, open-faced sandwiches, wraps, and the like. Now, one could argue what gives that particular flavor of bureaucracy authority over this. Well, that's easy. Money. Money's involved. Yep. Food ain't free. So, logically, by and therefore, ipso facto, post hoc ergo propter hoc, Wingardium Leviosa, a taco is a sandwich legally. Interesting. Yes. That's logic. You can't argue with that. I'm just curious as to how they say that if it's wrapped on three sides, it's not a sandwich. Because how do you categorize submarine sandwiches? Because depending on where you go, they either slice the bread completely in half, put all the toppings on, and then put the top back on. Or they'll only slice it like three quarters of the way through, open it up, put the toppings in, and then fold it back over. That is... Mm. That is that is. I a threw a st- monkey wrench in your. That is a sticky wicket. That's why yes. these are guidelines. Yes, not rules. Not rules. Guidelines. guidelines. Even though it says cube rule, where one is toast, two is sandwich, three is taco, four is sushi, five, which I prefer wrap, five is soup, salad, or with bread bowls, six sure. is a calzone. A human is a ravioli. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna. So we'll talk about tacos. Tacos. Maybe tortas. We're not going to get into the origins of the taco. There's a million different places uh, yeah. that, that say they, they were the first. Right. It's from Mexico in the early 1800s. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. the short, short version. The long version is for one of those PBS podcasts that are really boring. Right. Yeah. Tacos. When I say taco, you know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Unless you're from like middle America where the only taco you've ever had is a hard shell taco. Hard shell tacos originated in the U.S. Yes. Texas, I think. Because a lot of your, like, Mexico, your street tacos, they, they use corn tortillas, but they don't fry them all the time. Sometimes they'll give them a little bit of a, a toast on the grill with a little oil to give it a little bit of crispiness on like the outside, that. but like it's that. not the deep fried. When I make homemade tortillas at home, mm-hmm. like the corn tortillas, they always come out a little thicker because it's homemade. Right. Put a little salt, and I'll, and I'll grill them a little bit on, on either side or pan sear them or whatever. Now... Being having spent time in Texas, mm-hmm. the greatest grocery store on earth, H E B, sells what's called mixtlas, and I always get them every time I come out. Yeah, he got a whole suitcase full of them Fuck when we yeah, were there. Mixtlas are corn and flour, yep. so you get the tastiness of the corn, but you get the pliability of the flour. Right. You know how corn tur- like I'm literally looking at the the remnants of my adobo beef taco that I got from El Lucador here in Vegas mm-hmm. and the corn tortilla is split so now yeah. it becomes a fork job every one of my work. tacos did to the same Jesus thing Christ. <laughs> that annoys the shit out of me but there's nothing it, that's that's how corn tortillas are yeah this is why they put two of them in there they both break who cares which by the way ladies and gentlemen Barry actually has a tortilla press for those who I have two were wondering you have two I have one aluminum I, I, and one cast iron I stand corrected he has two because my press. other one was in, was in storage, and I'm like, I need a tortilla press now. So uh. I bought another, I, Amazon another one. <laughs> hey, can't go wrong. 
Um, I love making tortillas at home. It's the easiest thing. And people go, oh, you're so fancy. It's easy. Corn, masa, fucking water. Done. Yeah. Salt if you're feeling fancy. And I do. Two pinkies up over here. Um, I love me some tacos. Uh, hard shell tacos. That's what you're we all introduced to as a kid. You right. Know, from Taco Bell or from your mom getting like the Ortega pack from, yep. the, from the store that comes with everything. And you put like lettuce and tomato in it. That's very violently American taco. Oh yeah, yeah. It took till I was in my like my late teens before I first had like a real good Mexican taco because I never right. grew up around that. Yeah, yeah. Because I was from Jersey. We don't have Mexicans there. We have Puerto Ricans. <laughs> so Mexican food was like a uh, you had to go to a fancy place for that. It was fancy. It wasn't like yeah. just a cheap little Mexican place down a the corner. They didn't exist. Although when you lived in Houston, didn't you have like weird Mexican food? I mean, I, officially it's Tex-Mex. A lot of what we eat here in the U.S. is Tex-Mex. It's yeah. it's a mix of the two cultures. But didn't you have some real issues with a lot of the Mexican food down there? I hate cor- uh, corn and carrots and peas in my rice. That's yeah. a Tex-Mex thing. Chili con carne is a is a is a topping for like right. tacos and shit, and that's not. That's a Tex-Mex thing. There are some very good Tex-Mex things, but you have to acknowledge that it's not Mexican. And yeah. once you make that, that put that border in your head, once you put that bundling board in your head between Mexican right. and Tex-Mex, um, yeah, Google that, um, then it's okay. Because authentic Mexican fried rice has little to no vegetables in it. You might yeah. have some onions in there, but yeah, you're... You're basically, um, it's, they cook it down in some like tomato puree yeah. and then uh, add a little oil, et cetera. But it, it it's, a, it's a pretty simple thing to make. Yeah, I just throw it in a crock pot with salsa yeah. and be done yeah. with it. Yeah, you can like do that Spanish too. Spanish rice. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a hybrid maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hard shell tacos are not something you normally do for breakfast, but I love breakfast tacos. Breakfast tacos are good. And my favorite, favorite tacos so far that I've that I've found, like chains, mm-hmm. uh, Torchy's Tacos. Okay. That's the one we took you to when we went down there. We, we did a special trip just to go to Torchy's because I couldn't live with myself if not going to Torchy's. Right. Yeah. What did you think of Torchy's? It was not bad. Yeah. It was not bad. Do you remember what you got? I think you got like a, a Democrat. Or I was think it the, so. Uh, yeah. It, they, they the, all of their uh, tacos have a name, and it's all fun stuff. Fun stuff. They because they had what they had the Democrat, they had the Republican, they had um, the trailer park, the trailer park. They had uh, God, I'm, I'm blanking out on them. I'm My to... favorite is the ranch hand, and that's mm, just yeah. brisket oh, with egg. And it's just brisket and egg and cheese, and their Diablo sauce, which is right like, like a habanero sauce, but it's not super spicy. It's right, just spicy enough. It was like creamy and spicy, if bit. I remember correctly. Yeah. yeah, I know what I'm in for when I when I eat that. Right, my my stomach's not not in for a good time, but I fucking love it. I love it right. so much. And they always have special stuff. Um, I I I wish that we had time to drive all the way down to Sugarland in Houston just to just to so that you could taste Pacific Coast tacos, uh, their Korean beef taco Ooh. in a jicama shell. Nice. That's a whole other thing. Man. Yeah. Yeah. If you're ever in Sugarland or in uh, North uh, Houston, there's there's one just north of center of town. Uh, super good. Super nice. good taco. Um, but you get those type of taco joints there. Here in Vegas, we, we just get traditional kind of Mexican. Yeah. I mean, it depends taco. on where you go. Like, for example, uh, we, we were talking about this when we were trying to figure out where to go for my birthday for dinner. But... Uh, one of the places, like, if you like a good sit-down place for tacos, there's a place called Tacos and Beer. Mm. And Mm-mm-mm. they have a nice selection of traditional street taco-style tacos. Um, it does skew more towards traditional Mexican than Tex-Mex, even though they do have hard shell tacos, Tex-Mex stuff. But what's fantastic is they do have... A little area, in fact, we were seated next to the little area where the lady behind the glass is making the fresh tortillas and then also make um, pressing the corn and cutting it into little triangles and then dropping them in the fryer to make the fresh chips for the chips and salsa that they serve on the table. So, um, But as far as like, you know, 
quick takeout. There's a there's so many here in town. Tacos and beer for three tacos and two sides is seventeen ninety five. Are they pricey? Yeah, they're not like street tacos, but fuck, they're so good. But they do also have Taco Tuesday specials. Yes, they do. Um, I like their 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 chicken tinga comes with a chicken breast that's mm-hmm. simmered with the salsa verde. Yep. And the, the vegetables and the pickled red onion can't get enough of that. Um, I like the shrimp one because it comes with the Guajala chilies and the cilantro lime slaw. Absolutely. You got to have that. But they're honestly the best is like I think they're one of their, their pork El Pastor. Yeah, their goes. Pastor is pretty good. Pineapple, onion. See, pineapple belongs on things. Onion, cilantro, a little crema, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just really good tacos. Yeah. Uh, but if you're like doing takeout, there's so many places. I mean, there's yeah. Roberto's Taco Shop, which is pretty much all over the western part of the united states here that, uh, those are started solid. in the san diego area and then spread um there's riva's mexican grill which has kind of popped up here in vegas as of late they have like 10 locations now i see those attached to like 7-elevens or like ampms you know they're near stations. um near my ass they're d- dead attached to them well, i've seen them in, in texas too oh yeah, i was gonna say because the one by my house is just in a little strip mall oh so. that's cool but, uh, I mean, there's other great places. I mean, shoot, even frickin' Chipotle has crispy hard shell tacos, which, by the way, are pretty legit. I mean, they make the, 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 the fried hard shell. Well, you can actually choose hard or soft shell. Okay. Um, I like them with the barbacoa, and they'll put whatever toppings you want on it. So With the hard shells, if they're, pan, if they're homemade, yeah. if they're not just, if it doesn't look like just one big tortilla chip. Mm-hmm. Then okay, I can and they're deal with that. and they're a little thicker, so that you get that nice satisfying crunch. And when you put your salsa on there, it doesn't soak it down to the point where it's just crumbling in your hands while you're trying to eat them. I'd like to try a burrito taco, but a hard shell. Sure, you just had burrito tacos, yes, from this place called El Lucador. Uh, they got a couple locations here in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one that we just ordered from used to be a Sweet Tomatoes. I know they used to go there. Um, I absolutely love this place. Mm-hmm. It's a Vegas thing. Um, I've never had a bad meal from this place. And the adobo beef tacos are great. The quesadilla with the carne asada is amazing. And they got good drink specials. Yeah, I mean, and a burrito taco, it just depends on how it's prepared. Because, um, you know, one of my friends who's Mexican, he was telling me how, like, how his mother makes them. You know, you cook that consomme, like, all day long, and you're cooking the the beef in there so mm-hmm. it's basically just falling apart he said but when you actually go to make the taco you take those corn tortillas and you dip them in the consomme and then you put it on the flat grill and then you take the beef out and you put it on there maybe a little cheese that explains why your corn tortillas were a little orange yes um but what they didn't do is the step that he said that most traditional burrito tacos are where they while it's on that flat grill, they fold them over and they caramelize that on each side, so it gives a little bit more firmness, mm. so it doesn't like the one that I just ate fall apart while you're trying to eat it. That's how I make my tacos. I make my breakfast tacos in the morning. You know, not every day, but when I'm feeling sure. fancy, I'll grill both. I'll flip both sides. I'll, I'll pan sear them a little bit and throw them, and then just put them aside. But yeah, he says that when that consomme. Um, combined with the sugar that's in the the tortilla itself that they caramelizes together it gives you the you know more classic style but like i said that's what he told me his mother does so yeah. well when i make my breakfast tortilla breakfast tacos i'll take uh refried beans mm-hmm. i like the black refried beans but for breakfast tacos just give me the standard the pinto beans sure and i'll throw some uh chilies in them okay you know or some of that here it is again fancy heb sauce the, the green sauce so fun. Um, just to spice them up just a little bit. Okay. Enough that Deb will eat them. My girlfriend does not eat spicy food. She yeah. Black, black pepper is occasionally too much for her. Yeah, it's a chemical thing. But it's enough in the beans. Yep. Give it a little something. Little yeah. Je ne sais quoi. No, that's bullshit. It's not je ne sais quoi. I know exactly what it is. It's chili peppers. Um, so uh, I'll stick the the grilled tortillas mm-hmm. and uh, the mixtillas. I'll smear the... Um, just a just a smear of the of, of the, the, of the, the refined beans. beans, okay. And then I like to do I like to do chorizo. If I don't have chorizo bacon, but chorizo is the way to go. Yeah, and you could just get the chorizo just prepackaged from the store. It's fine. Yeah, There's it comes no in a tube. Fancy. Cut it open. You I don't cook like the tube up. one. You don't like the that. tube? No, I like the ones that come. We we get imperfect foods, and when they get chorizo there, <laughs> yeah, I find yeah. it better. The okay. Tube ones. Eh, eh. Okay. Best chorizo 
find a Mexican grocery store around yes, you. Yes, for sure. Co- you go up to the counter. They'll say something in Spanish, in Mexican to you, or Spanish, and and you'll say, "Ah, uh, dude, what?" And then they'll talk to you in English, and then you say, "I would like some chorizo," and they'll say, "Here you go, thank you very much," and then they'll speak <laughs> Spanish to the next person. They look at me and they think because I look, you know, yep. uh, but I always have to correct. I'm like, dude, what? <laughs> it's like, sorry, I don't. Sorry, I'm just an idiot, and I would love some chorizo. I'm like, oh, we'll help you out. Um, so get the chorizo from the Mexican place. And while you're there, get get lemons and poblanos. Because you yes. need to cop, cut up some poblanos, not fucking bell peppers. Yes, poblanos. poblanos. They're not spicy. Yeah, poblanos tend to be very mild. Very, very mild. And just give you that little oomph of flavor. Yes. It's that little something-something. And it's that little something-something that takes it over the edge. So you could cut up the onions and the peppers. You cook them separately. You cook the uh, the chorizo separately. And then you marry them together and get them to know each other. Then you mix your eggs. Mm-hmm. You know, just making some scrambled eggs. But put some seasoning in them. Put a little cumin and garlic and oregano yeah. and a little chili powder. Here we go again. H-E-B makes this adobo seasoning that has all that already done. Or oh, you nice. make your own. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 fairly easy to mix up on your own. So, but uh, but yeah, absolutely. If it's already pre-mixed, you know, go for it. Just go for it, yeah. Um, put it all together. Throw a little salsa on it. You got the best breakfast tacos you ever. Now, the, my problem is I overstuff them. Oh, yeah? Which is why I get the mixed list because they hold together so you don't have to have two of them on there. Gotcha. Now, if I had corn, regular corn tortillas, I'd have to double up. Yeah. Which sucks. But that's breakfast yeah, tacos. you know. You can get breakfast tacos damn near anywhere. Now, do you prefer breakfast tacos or breakfast sandwiches? Hmm. It depends on, I, I think for me, it depends on what mood I'm in. Because, you know, you know Mexican tortas, another version of sandwiches, uh, just on bread instead of on tortillas, typically. Not always, but typically. Yeah. Um, I've had a breakfast torta before that was pretty awesome. But again, it was basically just a breakfast sandwich. Something in my lizard brain says tortas are no bueno. Because if I want Mexican food, I'm going to want it on a, in a quesadilla or I'm going to want it in a taco. Sure. A, a, I'm picturing Mexican food in a bun and it doesn't work. I know it does. People love right. tortas. Yeah, and I mean, it's very common, too. I just don't understand tortas, mm-hmm. you know? Now, fun thing about tortas, I looked these up before. Uh, generally, tortas are way more stuffed with things than American sandwiches. Right. It's not just ham, cheese, mayo, move on. No, you got, like, spread in there. Yep. You know, you got, like, a pepper spread, or you got... Uh, like beans or whatever, and then you they load up with the vegetables. Oh yeah, and then they get throw throw some some meat in there. A lot of times, like a pickled vegetable too. Pickled vegetables, yeah. Uh, the very Mexican meats and stuff. And to me, my my palate isn't quite comfortable with that. Okay. But I can see how they're ama- they could be amazing. But yeah. it's not like when you think Mexican food, you don't think tortas. You think tacos and burritos. And sure. You don't think of tortas. Well, we're conditioned to do that because, you know, we were sold on the fact that Tex-Mex food was, quote, unquote, Mexican food uh, for the entirety of our youths. And now that we're older, we're a little more discerning. And we know that there's, oh, a difference between real Mexican food and Tex-Mex food. Yeah. You put a torta in front of me. I'm not going to turn my nose up at it, but it is not the first thing I'm going to order in a minute. Sure. I know there's some amazing stuff out there. Like they do this milanesa or whatever. It's like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that thin, thin chicken and it's breaded or whatever. It sounds yep. pretty good. But if I want a chicken sandwich, I want a goddamn chicken sandwich. <laughs> Give me some brioche bread. I'll, I'll, I'll tear that shit up. Um, so preferred taco joints. Torchies, obviously, I think is number one. I can't wait for them to open a place out here. I will live out there. (laughs) Uh, There was a place in Houston called Taco Deli. Something about the beef in those tacos was amazing, but they weren't. They didn't do breakfast tacos that well. You Hmm. know, Um, I looked up like popular taco chains in in the U.S. Number one is Taco Bell, and that's just. And I don't know why, because Taco Bell is not great. No, but it's just popular. What's funny is I remember when I was a teenager and, you know, when you're a junior and senior in in the Wichita school system in high school, you you had open lunch. So you could go to Taco Bell 
and get a quite large amount of food for about three dollars, mm -hmm. including like a drink. Same for us. And it was good. But about 15, 20 years ago, they changed their seasonings. They changed their sauce packets. They changed I mean, so much of it. It just doesn't taste the same. In fact, it's I'd, I'd even hesitate to say it's probably bland now compared to what I remember as a kid. Yeah. And I don't know what the major change was other than maybe cost cutting. Well, I, the only reason I ever went to Taco Bell as a kid was it was cheap. Yes. And I remember once that this one girl in our class went there and I was like, oh, okay, clearly this is a cool place to go because she ended up being like Miss Teen Nevada or whatever. Oh, wow. Like, oh, okay. I want to go to Taco Bell more often. Maybe I'll chance run into her there. Uh, I, I never did. Never did. Yeah, no. I think she was just dragged there once because Miss Teen Nevada does not eat fucking Taco Bell. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Taco Bell is, I, I can't stand it, uh, though I do love me a Mexican pizza. Yeah, and yeah, they, they, finally, they finally brought it back. It's junk food. It, think of it as junk food and then and not Mexican food, and you'll be like, oh, okay, fine. Which, by the way, it's pretty easy to make a good Mexican pizza at home now. Um I did that actually over the pandemic. You gotta have the I crispy. Found it. How'd you get the crispy? Pie? So I'll tell you exactly what I did. Um, it's much easier to do now if you have an air fryer. But what I did is I would take my my corn or my flour tortillas rather because they do make their Mexican pizza with flour tortillas. And what I did, you gotta. I sprayed a little olive oil on both sides of the tortilla, and I put it in my convection oven. And then baked it till it just started to get a little brown, and then I would flip it and do it again, and it came out perfect. And then, COVID worked out for you. Didn't oh yeah, it? I, I got, to, got so I experimented creative. with a lot of stuff. <laughs> well, I found a recipe online that gave me some guidelines, and then I tweaked it because the way that they suggested to make your uh, flour tortillas crispy for the to hold up against the toppings because you're you know you're spreading refried beans on there you're putting ground beef on there you're you're putting your your either chopped tomatoes or your salsa on top etc it just wasn't working for me so i experimented a little bit and then that's when i discovered that if you basically toast them in the convection oven with the little oil on that it came out perfect now I'm trying to remember what's in the Mexican pizza. It's, it's the tortilla yep. with beans and yep. beef and, yep. then, and then cheese and another tortilla. Um, it's cheese melted on top, tomatoes. Um, and I, it Really, that's about it. Yeah, it's, that's about it, isn't it? It's cheese and tomatoes on the top, and the usually the tomatoes are melted into the cheese. And then you just put salsa and on then, the meat. Yeah, and then... The be the refried beans and and ground beef. That's that's pretty much all they use. I used to like the mix of the soft and the hard. Oh, chop, chopped chopped uh, green onions. Oh, oh, on top. What yeah. Thinking, yeah. Forgot about the chopped. What was green that onions. thing called with the soft taco with the beans wrapped around the hard taco? Oh God, not a gordita. I don't remember. A, not a, ch a double decker. It was just a double decker taco. Yeah, hey, everybody's got those. Like Del Taco has those now. Uh, you know, I way prefer Del Taco. Oh, way prefer far Del superior. Taco. Far superior for 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 fast food tacos. Let me qualify that for fast food tacos. Del Taco is way better than Taco Bell. Yeah. Uh, if you want like a sit down, yeah, go to go to some place that specializes in that stuff. Yeah. When we were talking about this, and I was coming up with these with these popular taco chains, I was like, well, what about Noggles? And Deb said that was more for burritos. Sure. If you remember that, I barely do. But anyway, that, Taco Bell was always number one on the list, and then they always list like Chipotle, yeah, and then Qdoba, which is basically a Chipotle. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's owned by Jack in the Box, I think, something like that. Yeah, and then Chipotle has been in the news recently because they skimp on the portions. Let me tell you something. The last time I was in Chipotle, I was lucky to get service. No one gave a shit. It was just a mess in there. It was the complete mismanagement. Hmm. It's it, it, very disappointing. And the funny thing is, I, I remember reading that same article, too, about the, quote, downsizing. And I'm sitting there going, the last two burritos I got at Chipotle were stuffed to the point where the frickin' tortilla was torn when I went to unwrap it from the foil. Yeah, it's inconsistency. Yeah. I, usually get, um, uh, I usually get a bowl. Okay, yeah. It's just easier. 
and it's a knife and fork job. <laughs> I, I remember somebody saying that's one of the quote life hacks is you you order the burrito bowl, they put all the ingredients in there, and then you order some tortillas on the side and you make the burrito at home. And I'm like, why would you want to do that? Why? But the 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 premise behind this was that you actually got more meat if you did the bowl versus mm. the actual burrito. Gotta, I don't know how true that is because, like I said, yeah. the, the the place I go to, I guess they know me. For, you know, they at least recognize me. I've always gotten a, a decent amount of meat because I always go with the carnitas. Because, I mean, the barbacoa is good, but the carnitas is always going to be my number they one. They got this there. chicken El Pastor. It's pretty good. I now. tried it. It was not it's bad. Pretty good. It's it's still not my favorite, but it's pretty good yeah. if I was going to go for chicken. But you got to get the fajita veggies in there. Yes. And they skimp you on those. I'm like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Yeah. Keep going. Keep, Keep going, going. <laughs> till I'm happy. Till I'm happy. So there's Chipotle Qdoba. Then there's Del Taco. And then there's places where I don't know if the East Coast has Cafe Rio's, but they're not bad. Rubio's. that they, They're kind of all over the place. Rubio's the- was great for fish tacos. And then they tried to branch into other things and... Now they're starting to fade out, I guess. Um, I, I think the parent company filed for bankruptcy a few years ago, so they closed a few of the Rubio's locations. But, uh, but yeah, they're still around, and they do make a really good fish taco. That was, that was my first introduction How to the fish taco. How are you going to beat Wahoo's fish taco? Um, that's an excellent question. Um, I've only had Wahoo's a couple of times, so I've only tried a couple of their fish tacos because they have all different kinds they've got the the batter dipped they've got grilled they've got you know and just i mean the list goes on and on but they make a bunch of different types of fish tacos with a bunch of different toppings and then you can also create your own which really kind of throws a caution to the wind and just says just put everything on it or whatever yeah it's not ever never a good idea but it's uh, never a good idea to let people create their own because they're going to create an abomination yeah usually yeah i love i love wahoo's fish taco though it gives me that surf seashore feeling okay you know that's this is what i eat if i were at the beach okay you know um another one that came up on the preferred taco joints of the u.s and i hate this is taco cabana I don't know Taco Cabana. Oh, you don't, do you? No. Oh, I've been in there a couple times, and every time I'm like, Hork, this is terrible. Salsa's crap, meat's crap, tortillas are crap, everything about it is crap. I don't even like their iced tea. Is that an East Coast thing or something? I don't know. It's it's. They're definitely, it was up the street from me when I lived in Houston, and I just, huh, Taco Cabana. Some more Midwest, maybe? It is garbage. And it's uh, the you taco, can fight me on that. Taco, taco Cabana. Cabana. I know, it's in my hands. Yeah, right. Now, yeah. Um, in Vegas, we have this place called Tacos El Gordo, which is supposed to be yes. super good. It's a it's a company that's originally based out of Tijuana. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think their headquarters is still there, if I'm not mistaken. They have three locations that I know of here in town. There is one on the Strip. Don't go to the one on the Strip. No, that is always packed. I mean, if you want to wait thirty to forty five minutes for your taco, and I'm not talking like just to order. Because it'll take you time to get up there to order. But once you place your order, it takes forever for them to because they're so freaking busy. I don't get it. But they have two other locations that are in more residential areas. Uh, the newest one is very new, very clean, and rarely busy. And it's um, next to Town Square on Las Vegas Boulevard and Sunset. Uh, so more residential area, even though it's technically still on Las Vegas Boulevard. Uh, that's the one that uh, people I work with go to all the time because they said that they've never had to wait long for their their order. They get in. They said if they want to eat there, it's a nice, bright, clean, new building. The other one is on Charleston. That's one of the older ones. That's kind of closer to me, but uh, uh, still, you know, the ratings are high on those two locations. A lot of the ratings on the one on the strip are low. I think probably because of the. Isn't there one down near Town Square? I think there is, and some of the parts of their menu they have some traditional Mexican mm-hmm. ones. When I yep. say traditional, I mean like tongue. Yeah, Ugh. I actually like beef tongue. It's Ugh. it's it's a muscle like any other muscle yeah. that they make meat out of. It's still beef. If if nobody told you you were eating beef tongue, you would never know the difference mm. because it is. Very flavorful, and especially if you've ever been to a market and you've seen beef tongue, 
cow's tongues are massive. So, you know, once they peel that skin off and cut it up, it looks like any other cut of meat from mm. the cat from the cow. So, right. I mean, you're right. Maybe I haven't been given it its fair shake. But I love a good lengua sleeper. taco. Is that what it's called? Lengua? lengua is is tongue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just I get a little squeamish around anything that could be considered sweetbreads. Now I will warn you off of cabeza tacos, which is cow brain. It is not good. That sounds disgusting. Yes, I have never been a big fan of organ meats. Sweetbreads. And when I talk about organs, I mean I'm talking like organ organs, not like muscle based organs. Lung, liver, yes. fucking bleh. liver. I hated. I always hated liver. Oh, my mom loved liver growing up. Liver she, and onions. Liver and onions. Yep. I don't get it. I I could never eat it. I just it was it tasted like dirt to me. A lot of people who like work out. You know, build muscle. And say, oh yeah, eat some liver or whatever. Well, it's supposed to be higher in iron and protein. Blah blah blah. I just, I, I am not a fan. Not a fan. No. Gross. But, Tripe. Fuck you. Yeah. Ugh. Gross. Exactly. Um, y- if you're in Vegas, you may look at a place called Taco Tarian, and it, it, they have very good marketing, and it looks really nice. Be warned. It is plant based. Yes. There is no meat at Taco Terra. Correct. Yeah. It all looks amazing. Although and if I'm in the mood for something plant based, great, which I occasionally am, but I did have um I think it's uh oh, what's the name of that burger that's plant based? Uh Impossible? not beyond Impossible. Uh Impossible makes a chorizo. And it's actually not bad. Okay, I have a bunch I of impossible know. meat in my freezer right now because occasionally we'll have American style tacos, and mm-hmm. I'll doctor it up, and it'll taste the same just to get away from beef every so often. But I didn't know they made a chorizo. Yeah, I was surprised, I, and and I didn't realize it till I was eating it. I was like, oh wait, it said impossible chorizo on the menu, didn't it? So uh, it's actually not bad. Um, it's it's. When you're eating it, you'll notice that a slight but very slight texture difference. So not enough that you it like makes you go, "Oh, this is definitely not chorizo." You're but if just, it's seasoned, yeah, enough, exactly. Who gives a shit? Yeah, exactly. And, and honestly, we shouldn't be eating cow. They're terrible. They're not even natural to North America. Uh, they're exotic animals, and they're killing the environment. And they're fucking terrible for you. But. God, I love the taste. Of I it. love some I beef. Love, I love the steak. Uh, so I even it out. I'm like, okay, I may have some beef one day, but maybe I'll have impossible beef the next. And I'll, I won't do it any other way than American style tacos with lettuce and tomato. Mm, yeah. And I'll season the shit out of it. Right. And it, it'll be just fine. Now, will I make a Mexican style where I make them um, with like peppers and onions? No. No? I won't do that. I, I feel bad doing it. And I, it tastes like I, I'll taste it more. With hmm. American style tacos, you're tasting lettuce and tomato and salsa, and if if you can have it, cheese. Cumin. Do you not season the beef, with, uh, the impossible season meat the with shit cheese? out of it with cumin, cumin and garlic? Okay, and yeah, that's what I was gonna say. So you're making it more, and, yeah. Okay, but I, but he's still, 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 I don't put peppers. I don't waste the peppers and onions on impossible. Meat. Okay, I'll save that for like a breakfast taco with chorizo or just bacon. Just okay, bacon. you know, I'll chop up some bacon if I don't have chorizo. Sure. Yeah, why not? Hell with it. Um, we talked about tacos and beer. There's another place in Vegas I want to talk about. It's called Hussongs. Hussongs. Yeah, they just recently opened. Yeah. No, not recently. Maybe a new one. But the Hussongs out in Tivoli Village, out northwest near Summerlin, has been around for a little while. Oh, okay. Um, and Hussongs, it's a chain. But right. They are one of the people who say this was the home of the original margarita. Interesting. One of the bartenders at one of the original Huss songs or the original Huss songs made, supposedly, made the original margarita. Yeah, there's always... No way to determine that's true. There's always a discussion on who created the margarita. You know what? I created the margarita. There. I just put that out in the world. (laughs) Fight me. I I don't know what to tell you. (laughs) But Jimmy Buffett might have a thing to say or two. Yeah, yeah. If he I were mean, still alive. I know. Um, Hussongs has got a good taco as well, and they have some burrito tacos too. I would be remiss if I did not mention the puffy taco. A puffy taco? What's a puffy taco? Well, I'll tell you. The puffy taco is a taco, like a taco shell, but they, they puff air into it, and it's just like this 
puff of taco. And there's this place in Houston called Los Tios where I first had this. And they stuff it, the puff, with they stuff the puff stuff with the puff. like beef or chicken or whatever, or cheese and vegetables and shit like that. And it's a puffy taco. And it is fucking delicious. Huh. Yeah. Find yourself a puffy taco. I have not been able to find one in Vegas. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's a Texas thing. Maybe. They're delicious. If you didn't know by now, folks, there's a lot of things that are only native to Texas. Yeah, it's weird. And they don't make their way out of those outside those borders very often. Mm-hmm. Every state has their own special thing, but Texas is big. It's got a lot of weird things. A lot of weird things. Yeah. Vegas, unfortunately, Vegas is kind of an amalgam of everyone who oh, visits yeah. here. And we don't have our own special thing unless you count, like, degenerate gambling. It's true. Yeah. If you like your tacos with a side of degenerate gambling... <laughs> Here's your place. This is your spot, right? What's your spot? Tell us what you've been eating. Write to us. Comments at inbredpodcast.com. If you like what you hear, support the show. Visit our Kofi. That's like Patreon, but better. KO-FI.com slash inbred, where you can win a sandwich. And we'd like to thank our meatball heroes, Atomic Gumby, Aegis Shockey, and Aaron Esk, and our Turkey Club members, Jeff Aroth, Leon May, and our newest member, Geek Savvy. Thank you so much. You're helping support the show. We're going to do more of these in the future. That's our little sandwich show. I'm Barry. I'm Jeff. Stay hungry, everybody. I, I know I'm unfortunately not because I just had one too many tacos. So since we were talking about tacos, as we say, stay hungry, my friends. Stay hungry, my friends. Yes. And don't order three fucking tacos when you could really only eat two like I did. And yeah. I'm staring at the remnants of an adobo beef taco, and I'm like, ooh, I kind of want that. I think and, we both made the mistake, except I ate the third <laughs> taco, and now I'm like, I'm feeling really full right now. Yeah, you... Mm. See, I'm learning. I'm learning yeah. not to eat my body weight in food, because I'm always uncomfortable afterward, and Deb gives me shit. That's the problem. You don't have Deb to give you shit. No, So the next you time don't. you eat too much, call, call Deb and say, Deb, I ate too much, and she'll give you shit. She needs to be a life coach, just like talk people out of doing stupid things. A, a, a taco coach. There you go. Ooh, is that a thing? Can I be a taco coach? It can coach? be now. What would that be? We've we've put it out into the zeitgeist. Yeah. So if you're at a Mexican restaurant or whatever, you don't know what to order, jump on our Discord if you're a Kofi member and say, I need help, and I will help you <laughs> for a fee. A small fee. <laughs> <laughs>